news and markets. Nice. Well, big news, Ren. We've completed our live show down in Melbourne. So I just want to give a massive shout out to everyone that came on yeah, the night. It, it was, was epic. an epic show. If you didn't make it, the good news is it was all recorded and we will be releasing it in due time. But we just want to say a huge thank you to everyone that did come and support us. Full house, we had people standing um, and it was just a, a great uh, a great evening. So yeah. thank you to the, the audience and then also our experts, Luke and Dylan and all of the others, uh, Phil and everyone that was in the audience and supporting supporting the night and answering all the questions uh, throughout. We, uh, we're we looking forward to many more across the next 12 months. Yes, yeah, no, it was great. But look, the news of the moment uh, is all about the Aussie stock market, at, <laughs> at least the, the finance and investing news of the moment. There is plenty uh, making news outside of that world, which we're not going to touch on. Uh, so let's focus on the Aussie share market because it is hitting all-time highs it is so the asx 200 has surpassed 8,000 points for the first time ever now we don't necessarily track the points here too closely but it is a milestone first time that it's hit 8,000 points the big drivers for this though ren the big four banks yeah absolutely smashing it. who's complaining about banks and miners <laughs> now well the miners not so good bhp down like 15 percent for the year rio down like 21 percent for the year uh, but how about these banks? So this is year to date. Combank up 17%. NAB up 21%. ANZ up 15%. Westpac up 22%. And I've included Macquarie here as well because they're essentially pushing yeah, yeah. into the, to the big four territory. Macquarie up 11%. So absolutely killing it. Being dragged. So the, the index itself is then probably being dragged down by the industrials, the miners and co. Yep. Uh, year to date, the ASX is up just shy of 5% at the time of recording. Did I, sorry, did I say Rio down 21%? Uh, I can't remember. I, I think I did. BHP is down 14% year to date. Rio down 12%. Fortescue down 24%. Wow, there you go. Yeah. So... <laughs> We're hitting all-time highs. Yes, CBA back in the number one position. Yeah, they knocked BHP out of the top spot. Yes. Um, <laughs> and I think uh, this is just another reminder of the importance of staying invested because mm. there are, would have been plenty of reasons to sell the banks. In fact, earlier this year, Macquarie downgraded all four of the major banks and City put out a sell all four major banks in like April. Um, but they've just kept on keeping on since then. Mm. So I think it's a reminder to sort of just kill the noise, keep investing, stay invested over the long term. Your ability to time the market is not zero, but it's nearing on zero. Even the best with all of their information can't do it. And for all of the reasons that the Aussie stock market shouldn't be doing as well as it is, for all of the reasons that the Aussie economy is struggling... We're hitting record highs. Yeah. We've never been this high. Love to see it. Yeah. Love to see it. I've got a few other companies that are worth just mentioning quickly. Okay. So big divergence in the two supermarkets. Uh, Woolworths down 8% for the year. Time to buy. <laughs> Coles <laughs> up 8% for the year. Mm. Well, we know what happened to Woolworths. That's not as bad as they were though. I think they were down over 10% at yeah. one point. So um, everyone's seeing absolute, uh, everyone's seeing value in Australia's leading supermarket being <laughs> Woolworths, <laughs> not a buy, hold or sell. Um, but yeah, that is interesting to see. And then two more that I think are worth pointing out. West Farmers up 22% oh, for wow. the year. Yeah. Bunnings. Uh, they, they do own Bunnings. Yes, yeah. yeah. What else? They own Officeworks, Kmart, Kmart Target, yeah, well, and they have an industrials business as well. Fascinating, given the pressures that are cons a lot of consumers are coming under. Yeah. So, I, I um, actually don't know what part of the group is driving that performance. <laughs> Maybe it's Bunnings. But if it is Kmart and Target, you could see consumers trading down. Yeah, definitely. Into, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But the, uh, if we're doing a roundup of the large cap Aussie stocks driving the index, we have to touch on this one. It's in the top 10 and it is just ripping. It's Goodman Group. Mm up 42% year to date. Mm. The property developer and owner is riding the rise of data centers amongst other things to new highs. Yeah, so if you held the VAP ASX, the Vanguard Australian Property Securities Index, you would be benefiting from that because it is a large position in that index. 
Um, so yeah, interesting. So we spoke about CBA knocking off BHP and there is some news that is surrounding BHP, Ren, that shows the perils of thematic investing. The headline is that BHP is stopping or pausing, stopping a lot of its nickel operations in Western Australia, specifically Nickel West and a West Musgrave project. They said they're going to temporarily be suspending these. Uh, until something like 2027 yeah, or something Yeah, Feb like 2027, that. they'll revisit the decision. So that's the headline, but uh, help us understand why this is a good reminder on, on the challenges when it comes to thematic investing. The last few years, one of the biggest thematic investing themes has been battery metals. And there's a bunch of um, ETFs that have spun out in Australia, the US, everywhere to invest in that theme. ACDC. Uh, yeah, the and one. yeah, there's a heap. So yeah. let's not name check him because <laughs> it's unfair to the ones that we don't name check. There's a heap. Yeah. Um, and the overall thesis is right. Nickel is one of the critical battery metals. Lithium is another critical battery metal. And the demand for those metals, amongst others, is going to massively grow. And that's the thesis for the thematic ETF. And that is completely true. But just because demand is going to grow doesn't necessarily mean that every producer is going to do well and every country with those metals is going to do well because just because demand grows doesn't mean price will grow. And this nickel story is a classic example of that. The reason that... So Australia and Indonesia have are equal first for supply of nickel. We're like, we are going to be in theory, going to be nickel power houses. The problem is that Indonesia can produce nickel a lot cheaper than us. And so this global oversupply is coming from Indonesia and a little bit from China. But because Indonesia is producing it so much cheaper, BHP can't compete. Mm. So in Australia, for all of its reserves, can't compete. And it means that BHP, you know, if you were going to invest in BHP with a thesis around battery metals and nickel... You were right that they have, they can produce a lot of nickel. It's just that the global price has moved against them and they're not going to be able to do it cost competitively. Yeah. And I think you can see that in history with a number of other materials. I think the classic example was uh, that Scott Phillips actually spoke about on an episode of Buy or Sell. He was speaking about it in context of lithium, which also demand is rising, but price is absolutely tanked because there's cheaper supply coming on. Supply is growing faster than demand. And he spoke about the same thing happened with oil back in the day, like 100 years ago. Everyone had this thesis that oil demand was going to massively increase, and it did, but price didn't move in that same way because new technology came on and some new supply came on that meant we could produce it a lot cheaper. Mm. So it's just a, it's a watch out when you're investing in a thematic ETF for that reason. Thematic ETF, but I think specifically in all those examples where it's a commodity driven, That's a great a, a commodity driven yeah. ETF. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where this, where truly supply and demand is just the driving factor. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because the price is a two sided equation and mm. a lot of the thesis is really just focused on one side of that equation, which yeah. is demand. Yeah. yeah. Love it. Well, let's keep moving. Equity lines. I will say this about investing. Everything you do learn is cumulative. What I learned at 20 is useful. 